Hello everyone and welcome to the other game of the finals of the Julius Bear Generation Cup uh, Arjun Erigaisi versus Magnus Carlsen. Now Arjun has the white pieces and he must win a game to bounce back in the match. Magnus won a brilliant game in the first um, uh, the, their first encounter in the finals uh, creating uh, well uh, nothing short of a brilliancy and now Arjun uh, has a chance to bounce back. It's quite the game. Uh, let's enjoy it and then we are going to discuss what happened in the rest of the match. So Arjun has the white pieces and he opens with e4. We have e5 by Magnus, knight f3, knight to c6 and now bishop to c4 going for the Italian game and Magnus plays knight to, uh, knight to f6 going for the two knights defense not even allowing uh, Arjun the chance of going for some sort of a, an Evans gambit. We have d3 and now bishop to c5. So the Joko Pianissimo is on the board. We have c3 and d6. Nothing new here. Uh, all been played many many times before we have castles and Magnus plays a5 uh, you could also consider some other moves like castles h6 or, or whatnot but a5 stops b4 so it always makes sense we have bishop to g5 h6 bishop to h4 and now uh, it's a very interesting position as it has been reached a few times for example g5 is a known movie it was played uh, in 2017 in the French team championship Benjamin Gladura uh, lost the game to Maxime Vachel Lagrave with this g5 move even though there's nothing wrong with g5 it's just very very tricky to play in this position queen e7 is a known move uh, peter swidler played it against wesley so and lost the game also bishop to a7 is a known move uh hari krishna defeated abdu satarov with with bishop to e7 uh, to a7 but here we have bishop to d7 it's a very very weird move uh, but it serves a very very uh, clear uh, plan as you'll see very soon uh, and it is, of course, as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. I keep repeating this, but it uh, seems like every game there's like a completely new position already on move 8 or 9, which is um, uh, really awesome. As uh, pl players don't play like 20 moves of known theory, they have to uh, start uh, thinking right, uh, uh, well, uh, in uh, during the first 10 moves. So rook to e1 makes sense. If you ever want to push d4, d4 pawn must be protected. We have bishop to a7 now, so d4 does not come with uh, an attack on the bishop. And now knight b to d2 so the usual joko piano stuff knight is coming to f1 then to e3 or g3 then maybe to f5 or h5 all depending on what uh, black plays g5 now by magnus uh, we have bishop to g3 and now knight to e7 the knight will uh, nicely support this pawn when it comes to g6 controlling both f4 and h4 uh, and now arjun wastes no time and he strikes in the center with d4 and okay knight to g6 by magnus we have d captures on e5 you could also consider uh, like a3 or a4 uh, just continuing uh, to, uh, to uh, you know uh, put your pieces on perfect squares but Arjun decides to trade in the center right away and this allows us to see the uh, power of bishop to d7 d captures d captures knight to f1 and now if the bishop was on d7 obviously the queens um, there would be this tension where the queens could get traded off but now Magnus just plays queen to e7 and he can nicely castle queen side the bishop on d7 is allowing this so it's a uh, very 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 uh, interesting approach knight to e3 and now magnus castles queen side uh, okay the uh, the e4 pawn is hanging but if you capture it now knight to d5 attacks the queen and you lose a piece uh, in case you were wondering but what about the e4 pawn so here queen side castles by magnus of course the queen now has to move from the d1 square so queen to c1 and it's a very hard to um, uh, decide where to where to put the queen okay you can put the queen on b3 but uh, it's not like magnus really cares about the f7 pawn if anything he would uh, appreciate if, if, if it was gone uh, this is covered by the bishop so your options are maybe queen to e2 and queen to, to c1 so queen to c1 is what arjun plays this will prevent the rook from entering the game but he will uh, he has plans of moving the queen of course from c1 at some point so rook h to e8 and now uh arjun says all right my e4 pawn is still hanging i'm just gonna play b4 i have to open up the position i have to start uh, attacking as i have to um, get back into the match and uh, the e4 pawn can be captured now but it's it's very tricky to see how because if 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 you capture on e4 knight d5 again attacks the queen and the knight here now the point is queen d6 you give up the piece uh only uh, temporarily and after rook captures on e4 now you play bishop c6 and now the knight is attacked three times if it moves then the rook hangs uh, so uh, this is how Magnus can play it but he just closes the position a4 he says you will not be attacking on the queen side I will be attacking on the king side uh, so here knight to f5 uh, Arjun says uh, all right but uh, you now by not capturing an e4 you give me a, a, a really awesome square for the knight here 
queen to f8 and now queen to c2 adding more support here we have knight to f4 by magnus and now rook a to d1 so uh the a4 pawn is a nice uh, the a4 move is a nice touch but maybe magnus allowed arjun too much here uh and here magnus could consider a move like uh, for example uh, king to b8 it's uh, not just a prophylactic idea uh, it also serves to protect the bishop because if queen captures the bishop will be hanging but magnus just plays bishop captures on f5 and now not recapturing arjun first goes for queen captures on a4 puts pressure on the bishop here so rook captures on d1, rook captures and now only now king to b8. We have e captures on e5, winning back the piece. And now Magnus says pawn to e4 with pawn to e3 coming. And that will be a problem as the bishop controls this um, uh, long diagonal. So here knight to d4, Arjun closes the diagonal and now pawn to e3 by Magnus. F captures, we have rook captures on e3 and now bishop to f2. And with bishop to f2, uh, Arjun sets up a beautiful, beautiful mating attack but only if Magnus falls for it and I will give you guys an opportunity to try and spot it uh, okay the rook is attacked let's say Magnus just moves the rook back uh, how do you win this uh, feel free to pause the video and try to uh, find what Arjun had in mind it's actually a forced checkmate in five so you know have at it So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that the knight simply must come to c6. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, that's exactly what it is. Knight to c6 check. Although many moves are winning here for white, you could play knight to b5, you could play bishop to b5. It's such a such an overwhelming position. But knight to c uh, sorry, knight to c6 is just uh, extremely forcing. Uh, now you you don't have a move. Of course, if the knight is captured, then it's just a nice checkmate. Queen captures on a7. The bishop guards the queen, king here, and now queen to a uh, bishop a6 with checkmate as the rook covers uh, d7 and, and um, uh, d8 so that's one way to do it and if you don't want to capture the knight then you could play king to c8 but then the bishop hangs with check you have to go back again the rook covers these squares and now you have to uh, accept the knight if you accept it then you get checkmate in the exact same way or if you play king to c8 then queen to a8 will be checkmate so this was arjun's idea when he played bishop to f2 and but magnus did not fall for it he just played queen to e7 uh defends the rook and now he doesn't mind if bishop captures on e3 which is what arjun played but uh, uh, that is exactly what uh, cost him the, the game amongst other things with bishop to f1 you are still fighting but after bishop captures on e3 queen captures on e3 king to f1 also a, a very nice um, a trick by Arjun uh, he's saying that if Magnus plays a weird move then rook e1 followed by rook to e8 and is game over only uh, let's say if this knight moves you play something like knight to d5 which seems like a move you want to play rook e1 and now you, you have to give up the queen or, or the queen moves just checkmate with rook to e8 uh, so Magnus plays uh, knight 4 to d5 this knight is crucial here to guard the e8 square and now rook to e1 doesn't really do anything just queen to f4 check and that's it so here Arjun played bishop captures on d5 and now uh, the problem is that everything is winning for Arjun except one move if Magnus makes it and that move is completely winning for Magnus. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Magnus now uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not uh, grabbing the piece back or playing something like Bishop Captures on d4 as those are winning for white. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course Knight to g4. That's the move that Magnus played and now there is nothing more to be done here. And it was in this position on move 29 that Arjun Erigaisi resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is you cannot prevent Queen to f2 checkmate. And even if you could, it's not enough. You could play something like Queen to c2 yes you guard checkmate but now knight captures on h2 is checkmate as the queen covers all of these squares uh there, there's just no way to defend both threats so queen uh, the, the the threat of queen to f2 and knight captures on h2 uh you simply cannot d defend against this so uh, you could maybe you know prolong the game with some queen captures on a7 action knight b5 check but there's just no way uh, to actually continue this uh, you know okay if you, the king goes here rook to, rook to d8 might be checkmate but the king can go to b6 or even to b8 there's just no way to move the bishop in time uh, like uh, whatever you do you just get checkmated so maybe if the bishop wasn't here okay maybe but uh, you know it's not so uh, no luck there so uh, Magnus wins the first game brilliantly he wins the second game more as uh, as an effect of um, uh, Arjun uh, trying to forcefully uh, win a game against Magnus which is very very hard 
So Magnus takes the win, and in the third game, uh, the, the game ended in a draw, not much was happening there. At some point, Magnus was winning, but Arjun never actually got a, got a shot at, at bouncing back. So Magnus only needed three games to defeat Arjun Ergeisi in the first day of the semifinals. There is one more day of the of the finals. There is one more day of the finals. Uh, so we'll see if Arjun will be able to, uh, to bounce back. As you can see in the quote above the board, he uh, Arjun says that he was telling himself not to think too much about the fact that he was playing Magnus and just play as if it was any other opponent. But uh, uh, even in game one, that uh, brilliant G5 move that Arjun missed, it, he didn't miss it, he just didn't play it. He said that he found the move and that he was thinking about it, but that he just didn't play it, uh, which, ju which just tells you how strong uh, the Magnus effect is. It's not just Arjun who fell victim to the Magnus effect, but also Magnus himself, as he, he allowed that with that bishop to H4 move uh, that I also was considering, uh, but uh, I mean... Who would find that uh, but uh, as you can see once again uh, the magnus effect takes no prisoners and uh, very very nicely done by by magnus in the first day of the finals uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and big congratulations to those of you who uh correctly solved both of the pause the video moments uh, they were not easy uh, i would like to thank uh, mehdi sokui uh, david kimura uh, dan ralos uh, paul sertanovic and henry spragans for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the finals uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.